the Joe Rogan experience. There's too many bongs out there, right? <laughs> People still rock the bong, though. Got to respect that, you know? It's like driving a manual car. I never was a bong guy. It's too heavy, man. I got too shit to do, around. man. I yeah. can't. Oh, the, the hit? Just yeah. peeled down. Or, or the dab thing. The, I got friends in Colorado, California now. The first time I ever did that shit. Uh, this is a pretty embarrassing story, but my <laughs> I, my buddy, you know, they were all like California, Colorado guys. They rolled pretty hard. I'm not really a heavy smoker, man, to be honest. On the road, it, it keeps me occupied from time to time, but if I'm writing, maybe, but at home, it, you know, there's no need. So it, the first time I did that shit, I didn't know what it was, you know, and I just pulled it like it was a big old bong rip, and then, like, everybody's face was like, oh, oh, you know, I was like, I need you instantly know you just did something you shouldn't have. Oh, no. And uh, I was like, oh, fuck, man. So I sat down, and after a couple minutes, I just started getting really cold and clammy, and I was like, yep, <laughs> I'm going to puke. So I went over, and I was like, I fucked this guy, so I puked right in his sink. Uh, and I was like, dude, I got to go home. I feel like dog shit now, and I'm pretty sure I'm dying. <laughs> so uh, I had we lived in this apartment, and I was like, I went out the door and turned the corner to go down the hallway to my, and it was full on vertigo. Like the hallway, every time I took a step, the hallway got twice as long. Uh, and I was like, this is fucked up. My wife was out of the country on work at the time. And I was like, I remember I was sitting down in the hallway, just like trying to get my shit together, man, because I, I thought I was having a fucking heart attack. It was just like, like boop, 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 sweating. And I remember this voice saying, get up, you stupid junkie fuck, before somebody comes out here and sees you, you know, sitting in the hallway like a dumbass. And I managed to, like, pop out of it. And as soon as I got back to my place and sat down on the couch, everything was fine. But it was just so initial in the rush. I was just like, I don't, nobody needs to be that stone, <laughs> you know, that fast. I'm sorry. Yeah, so. what kind of milligrams are you getting, you think? Uh, they just had like, like that. that nail head torch thing with yeah. this three thousand dollar glass piece. I was like, you guys are taking this shit way too seriously. Yeah, they're... Uh, you could be curing fucking cancer somewhere right now. I'm pretty sure if they put the effort, energy, and and mind power. And have you seen the laser bongs now? Some I got a video sent me the other day. Like this guy, like a pressure activated laser bong. He like shoots a beam and ignites the flower. Oh Jesus! Like that? Why is what the fuck's that guy doing? <laughs> Come on, man. Well, the thing is, they might be curing cancer. We got space colonies that somebody's going to need to build. You know, how many cancer patients are taking dabs? That might be the key. Out here, probably a lot. Get them on it. If I if I had if I was dying of terminal cancer, that's when you want to be that high. But look at this don't. thing. Do that again, Jamie. It's a yeah. Oh, that's it. Look at this thing. Of course, he had to put fucking. He hits the light. Look LED at this laser. In it. Yeah. This is fucking insane. Now, how do you not go blind staring at this? So he's heating it up. It's cooking. It's a good question. And then he takes a big hit. Wow. Yeah, anyway. Fuck, uh, the, 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 the medical strength stuff, I totally understand. And Fuck. I, that seems like you go blind, like if you're staring at a welder. Yeah. You know? Do you have to wear a welding mask? Uh, some, somebody <laughs> very very close to my life in my life <sighs> recently that went, went was dealing with that. Uh, Vertigo? No, like, like heavy medical issues health oh. issues and and we got him some edibles and uh he's like it's the only thing that made it okay like yeah. that discomfort and so I, when I, I had to have a sinus surgery we talked about this when we played the grammys out here uh last year i was sick as fuck man like i was getting all year for like the last year and a half on the road i was getting these horrible sinus infections all the time and i i, I just assumed it was allergies tennessee's really bad about that and we'd go to texas or Atlanta places in, in October when all these crazy dogwoods are kicking off. And I would lose my voice. And, you know, by no fault of my own, it became very frustrating from a touring standpoint because I felt like I was always sick, you know, it was because I was. So when we flew out and did the Grammys, I was all plugged up, couldn't sing. Obviously, biggest gig in my life, kind of stressing it. So the, the label guy sent me to this doctor who looked up in there and realized, you know, I probably had my nose broken at some point or just a really deviated septum when I was younger, so like a broken air filter. But then when they did the, the scan, like all the cavities were just completely caked with residual bacteria and infection. He's like, he's like, if you get on a plane and fly home, you're probably going to get meningitis. Whoa. So we had to play the Grammys. He, put, he like nuked me with all this shit. I don't even know what he did, but it opened it up for like a day. so where I was able to sing. So the next day, the whole band, they flew home. I had to stay out here for like nine days, I think, and go in every morning twice a day for IVs for him to clean that shit out so I could fly home. Wow. 
So then we came back and did this surgery to correct it all. And like went in there and scraped and cleaned them all out and shit. And uh, along with the, the septum, they fixed the septum. So I haven't had a single issue since all that happened. I haven't been sick one time, which has like changed my life. But while I was recuperating, long story short, I didn't want to take any of the opioid or the fucking pills that they gave me to deal with the pain. I was like, I'm not taking that shit. I'm, you know, you're going to give me this for four weeks? Like, no, no way. And so I just got a bunch of medical strength edibles. And, and my wife and the kids, they had to come out. We had to run a house. So I had to, had to be here to, like, recover and shit. And, man, just laying in bed, listening to headphones, stoned out of my mind for, like, a week recovering. And that's it's kind of awesome because you feel like when you're actually in pain or when you need that type of – that heavy type of alleviation, what, what it is actually doing – and offering you in terms of relief. And it gave me a whole new understanding and respect for like the medical side of that shit. Here we are back on pot again, but yeah. Um, and then my buddy who, who dealt with some pretty serious cancer said it was literally the only thing that made him feel better. So what did it do for you? Like, so you're, you're um, in this terrible agony. Yeah. Your nose was, is all fucked it's up. It's all plugged you know? up. I had like all this gauze and shit. And you know, I could feel where they'd been in there, like behind scraping. me, scraping. And I could just, you know, so to immediately, like all that was gone. And you just sort of get really docile and euphoric and relax. I mean, like so fucking high, but like it didn't affect me in a in a overdosey nauseous sort of way. Like if you right. eat too many edibles, because your body actually needs it. Needs it. Yeah. Uh, and I laid there listening to headphones and came up with the, the record I'm working on now, which is great <laughs> for me because it was like that's what I want to do next. You know. Um, yeah, it's a it's a crazy ride those edibles, but if you can take that ride, you get something out of it. And sometimes people take the ride, and the feeling is just too too self-examinatory, too no. paranoia-inducing. Sometimes people just can't handle on a, it. On a mass legality issue, I, I mean, if anything, I, I know it's just going to fuck pot up, you know. But from a medical stance, I, I do I can't see any reason why we're still even talking about this. Yeah. You know. No, it doesn't make sense. We we're we're being fucked over by giant pharmaceutical companies that are making billions of dollars. And they would realize how much more money they would be losing every year if marijuana becomes fully legal. They've already lost money for sure. I guarantee you there's people that are buying edible marijuana right now that would have bought pain pills. They know it. Also insurance companies. Yep. You know, on the job accidents. Oh, we had weed in a system. We're not going to pay that. So like, my life insurance now, I, I man, this is crazy. I did like one of the first interviews I ever did, I think, I talked about like the first time I moved to Nashville. And how like I didn't really know anybody, and or it was this was like 2005, and it was a different town then. So like I basically, and I said, I spent most of my time listening and playing bluegrass and drinking, which is pretty much what everybody does the first year they move to Nashville. Mm. But uh, then I and I said like after that, well I moved out to Utah and got this job and, and you know got sober, was working all the time. So somebody put on my Wikipedia page that I've talked about my struggles with alcohol. And those people read that shit, man. When I had to get a life insurance policy, like they showed up, they'd read all the interviews and like, wow, you've been really open about this and that. And I was like, yeah. And they're like, so you do the whole medical test. And of course I test positive for THC because I'm on the road all the time. And I was like, but I don't, I don't smoke it. You know, I vape or edibles. Like I don't act, I'm not a smoker. I never smoke cigarettes, but they list you as a smoker. And now I have like a criminally fucking insane yearly life insurance policy because, of course, like, you know, they think, well, musician, too, this guy's going to die. We can't fucking. You know? I have the exact same thing. Yeah, it's insane. Like, I don't, know, I don't even smoke, but I'm, I'm listed as a smoker, and it's like literally $9,000, some crazy fucking premium just to make sure my family's okay if I die on a business trip. Yeah, they, um, they tested me, and uh, they said, well, you tested positive for pot. I go, yeah, that's because I smoke pot. You already know that. Like, what are you doing? You're trying to. Pretend I'm Has not anybody healthy? ever died from smoking pot? No, it's stupid. It's a dumb thing. Unless you think that I'm going to do dumb shit because I'm high all the time, if, if that's what you think. But that doesn't make any sense. You need to test how healthy I am. Guess what? I'm fucking healthy. Right. Yeah, I work out all the time. Super healthy. Eat good. I know what I'm doing. Like, you don't know what you're doing. The problem is you don't know what you're doing. You're the insurance guy. Right. You don't know what you're doing. If you knew what you were doing, you would look at each individual and go, oh, this guy's fine. This guy's healthy. This guy's concentrating on his health. This guy who doesn't smoke pot and just eats sugar all day, this guy's kind of fucked, though. Oh, that guy's real fucked. That guy's fucked. This guy who's on Adderall because he's got a prescription for ADD and you don't have a problem with that, that guy's fucked. All these other people, there's a lot of people that are fucked out there, 
And these insurance companies that think that a guy who smokes pot is more likely to die, there's no statistics to back that up. There's no statistics that say that people who smoke pot are more likely to get diseases or die of some sort of a fucking debilitating uh, syndrome that came about because of overuse of THC. It doesn't exist. But they're not even testing you for alcohol. They don't even tell. They tell you, ask you how much you drink, but they're not testing you. Like they can't test you. It's not in your system anymore. It's really strange because uh, in in the Navy and at the railroad, there were very stringent, obviously highly stringent drug policies. But you know, drinking your ass off every night is completely fine. Completely fine. You know, don't don't smoke a joint at five p.m. But kill that six pack and come in here and build this train the next morning. <laughs> You know, th those were always the guys that made me nervous. <laughs> you know, like, but not only that, there's like a culture of honor behind it. Like how much you can handle your drunk. How, mu how much can you handle your drinking? Bobby had 17 fucking beers. I swear to God, bro, you would think he had zero. He's right there. Good for Bobby. Bobby's an animal. Yeah. Bobby puts him down. Like there's like a, a badge of honor that goes to that. You, Bobby's, meanwhile, he's taking something that's completely hindering his thought process, his... His stability, his his emotions are all out of whack. Like he's fucking drunk as shit. Right. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's he's wrestling. His brain is wrestling with alcohol right now, which is one of the weirdest depressants. You know, it's, it's awful. One of the weirdest drugs. It's uh, you, you spend a lot of time on the road, traveling constantly. One, you can't really drink, especially at, at our age. It just does things. But you look out at rooms full of people every night that are. Hammered. Sometimes really drunk, or like if you work with people, yeah. I, I don't. I refuse to. I don't. I don't like really let people drink in my band on the road, and that's, that's, when you that's say cost you, me players because they'd rather drink than be in your band, and it just. Would you say you don't drink? Can they have a glass of wine with dinner? Well, there's, there's, yeah, well, that's like you know a beer or two, two you know. That, right. There's just not getting hammered. I'm just saying there's people that shouldn't drink. Right. You know what I mean? Yes. Like the guy that has one drink and instantly turns into a different Ooh. motherfucker altogether. Yeah, and then by the time he's on that third one, everybody's like, "How much longer we got to do this?" Yeah, you know? there's a lot of those guys <laughs> out there too. A lot of people. I didn't know that existed until uh, I, I, the first time I met one. One where the switch goes off and they the get Jekyll, gerbilized. Oh, the Jekyll and Hyde drunk. Yeah, yeah they get sweet. gerbilized. Like oh. gerbilized. Wow, that's a good way to put you know? it. Man. They're like they're, they're not like, there. Like ah, ah, ah. shit gets weird. They're like whoa, and they're moving yeah. around like they're a normal awoke person. <laughs>